If you would have told me five years ago this is where I'd be sitting with you, I, I would have said, I highly doubt that, but okay. The beauty of having the success of a show like Buffy so early is that you achieve more than you ever think possible. I also have two young children, and I love the lesson that they've seen that, you know, mommy had a great career. Mommy could have been doing that forever, but mommy had an idea. Mommy wanted to try something new, and mommy wanted to challenge herself. What was the impetus for you launching Food Stirs after having such a successful career in entertainment and striking out on your own as an entrepreneur? I've always wanted to do something else, but I didn't know what that space was. And then I had children, and it was the typical cliche where everything changed and my priorities shifted and what interested me shifted. We were so aware of the rise of all these cooking shows. I mean, you'd have to not own a television to not be aware of the popularity of the Great Bake Off and the Food Network shows and all that. And our kids had this great interest in on a look further, you then realize that the baking category in general was this $7 billion category that was predominantly 80% lion's share by these legacy brands that people had out of forced loyalty and wasn't something that I, as a modern consumer, would be interested in. You've talked a lot about the, the fact that fundraising was this big challenge um, and bigger than, than you anticipated. What was that experience like for you and how did you navigate it? I think that people think it must be so easy coming as a celebrity into the fundraising arena. I probably got meetings with, you know, big VCs that other people wouldn't get right at the bat, but it was a novelty. It was, let's see what Buffy has to say, but there was no, I, I don't think that there was a real interest and it was really about us having to sell once in that meeting. And fundraising in general is difficult, you know, but I, I always say that it, you're always gonna get no's and no matter what, job you're in. I think that was the one thing that being in the entertain entertainment industry prepared me for was the no's because we get no's so often, you know, so it didn't get me down as much because I know that it only takes one yes. Was it ever frustrating for you because, you know, you had such success in, in one role and, and, and were so, so much part of sort of the cultural, you know, moments of the 90s. And as you've evolved and developed and are building new brands, was it hard for you to continue to be boxed no. within that? I mean, that's an honor, right? If people will always, if you as an actor have a role that's indelible in those people's minds and that as a, a movie or a television show that lives on, whether it's Buffy, whether it's Cruel Intentions. I mean, that's an honor, that's what you hope for as an actor. So yes, would you love to be considered more seriously? But I also didn't hadn't earned that right yet. You know, now I hope that the headlines aren't necessarily that um, because I feel like I, we've proven ourselves and I've proven myself and we have proof of concept. Um, but in the beginning, you know, Whatever gets them to notice, right? It doesn't necessarily get you down as much, but was the rejection different for you? You know, having, you know, experienced a career where there are more no's than, than yeses often, but in a very different arena. Sure, there are times where it feels personal. Mm -hmm. There are times, definitely. And then there are times where you're less in your head and you said, well, it's not for them. And you know, at the end of the day too, you want smart money. And I think that's something else that we were all very well aware of in the beginning, which is you don't take the first check that comes around because what do they have to offer in the long run? Is it someone you can work with? Is it someone whose experience is an asset to what you're doing? And is it someone that will support you when you need it, but also be hands off? Do you want to really look for not just money, but smart money? So much of, of the work that, that you've done and also work that entrepreneurs do uh, is under intense spotlight. What advice would you give to others in terms of, you know, silencing out the, the critics and knowing when to listen to, to the feedback? My husband and I always talked about that. And we always said, if you're going to believe all the good reviews, then you have to give the negative reviews the same equal amount of attention and authenticity. But I think the most important thing and that I've learned through all of this is surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. And I, that's my best advice is to have those people around you that, you know, can talk you off the ledge and can also, you know, pick you back up.